As the national draws to a close, I'm counting down 12 things that were red hot. Let's data dive. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Data Dive. It's Todd Another Cop, better known as Teapot, and I am live from the National. It's winding down. It's been an awesome, awesome show. Tons of energy, tons of great interactions, and there's a lot of things here that have been red hot. This is the biggest National ever, for sure. I've gotten turned around like 53 times, and I'm really excited to share with you some of the things that I've been seeing on the show floor, things that people have been asking about, starting right away at number one, and it's all about football here. I don't know if it's the time of the year. Football's always been popular at the National, but this year it feels like all I'm seeing is football. The Card Kids trade zone, if it's not Pokemon, has been nothing but football. These young kids only want to do football, and that's been really hot. And I'm starting with one player that has actually surprised me quite a bit, and that's Sam Howell. Now Sam Howell, if we look at price movements over the last 14 days in market movers, is actually down 3.2%. I'm just hearing a lot of people suddenly really, really excited about Sam Howell. I'm not sure if they just think it's a sneaky play because his cards are significantly cheaper than Desmond Ritter, Brock Purdy, and those guys, or if there's something more to it. Obviously, Washington fans are rooting for, for Howell. In my opinion, that's the toughest division in the NFC, and it's going to be really tough for Sam Howell. They've got a decent defense. He does have some weapons. It remains to be seen what he can do. If we jump over and we look at his Prism Silvers, I've got his Raw and his PSA 10 here. These ones really not doing a lot over the last 30 days. Uh, you can see here the PSA 10 is down 9%. His raw is up 22%, but that's you know 41 to $50. Sometimes shipping can just make that kind of a swing on a card in that price range. So Sam Howell's the first player that's been extremely, extremely hot at the National, at least in terms of buzz from people. The next player, Joe Burrow until the injury and that was early i don't know if that was the first or second day but i was hearing a lot of people do you have any burrow do you have any burrow i'm looking to move my burrow it was two-way street and then he goes down with the injury in practice thankfully it sounds like it's maybe two to four weeks kind of a grade one ankle sprain there were concerns that it might be the achilles he's up just 2.4 percent over the last 14 days and if we look at his prism silvers here we can see that he is actually up 5.6% uh, on his PSA 10, 1.8% on his raw, so basically flat. I'm really curious to see what's gonna happen now with Burrow in this window when it's typically the most hype and the most lead up to the NFL season. Now third on my list is Desmond Ritter. You know that Jeff was really high on him. Ritter, I'm not sure, it's kind of, you know, I'm not sure if I would say he was hot. There's a lot of talk about him and I've seen a ton of Ritter. I think what's happening is that people are trying to unload their Desmond Ritter. Maybe they don't actually believe in him going into the season. Jeff obviously bought that big black finite one of one auto from Prism. That was his big investment into Ritter. It remains to be seen. He's down 1.9% over the last 14 days. And same story here if we look at his uh, Prism Silver PSA 10 and RAW. These are actually down on his RAW 59% from $66 to $27 and down from $280 to $228 on his PSA 10. So we've all been saying, Jeff, if Ritter ends up being a star, you're gonna be pointing the finger at all of us and, and saying, I told you so. You know, I got a kind of root for him now that I'm in Atlanta, but it remains to be seen with Desmond Ritter. All right, next on my list, it's MJ. No surprise, we're here in Chicago, the home of the GOAT, and it's been MJ everywhere. Every booth has MJ, and it's all marked very, very high. There's not an MJ deal to be had on this show floor, in my opinion. You saw Jeff, he picked up a couple of the signed autos. There's memorabilia, there's all kinds of stuff everywhere. Jordan is hot and hotter than ever here in the Chicago land area. Next, related to MJ, number five, it's 90s inserts. There's always a huge supply of some cards that you just otherwise never see. One thing that's been a little maybe irritating to some people is that some people are just putting their cards out for display and not actually for sale. So they're sort of flexing and showing off these epic 90s collections. Oh, how much for the, you know, the epic Duncan? How much for this card? They say, no, no, that's not for sale. I just wanted you to know that I have it and you won't get it. So 90s inserts have been really hot. And you know, just as you know, we have so many of these in market movers just scrolling through. This is my nostalgia, my heyday. This is what I'm looking for on the show floor this year, 90s inserts. Number six, tons of vintage. There's vintage everywhere. There's always good vintage at the National. That's kind of the backbone of what the National has always been. But this year, it seems like it's just some of the best vintage cards you've ever seen. 
vintage everywhere. I'm getting a lot of kids coming up to me and saying that they're switching gears and looking into vintage and educating themselves. That's really encouraging to me because I hope the vintage piece, you know, from the, the old, old stuff, not what will be vintage in the future like 90s, never loses its luster. I hope they carry on the tradition because it's such an important part of the hobby. Number seven is Shohei Otani. Otani obviously has been in our top five. You know, he's filled up the SCI app for the last two months. There's nobody hotter than Otani. Last 14 days, he's still up 9%. And boy, have we seen some major whale Otanis. We had a guy who came up, he had pack pulled a jersey numbered uh, uh, Otani out of 150, a Bowman Chrome Auto, just tons of amazing Otanis all over the show, show floor. And people are paying up. I got rid of my gold Otani refractor, the PSA 10. I might regret it a little bit right now, but I did take the profit on that about a month ago, and I can't complain about that. Number eight, the Topps National Redemption Packs. The line is crazy, and people have been waiting. You have to get there right away. People are literally sprinting across the show floor when they get here in the morning to get in line to get those packs, and they have been absolutely loaded. I've heard the Panini ones, not as good. The Topps ones have been absolutely loaded. We saw somebody walk up. He pulled the Drew Jones Super Fractor National uh, one of one on day one and went and got it graded immediately, PSA 10 with PSA. That was a huge pull. Tons of cards. Some people a little cranky because they wait and then they run out of packs every day and they have to come back the next day, but those have definitely been hot and loaded. The ninth thing, Vault Wars are in full effect. We've got Golden next to us, we've got the eBay Vault, which is now open for business completely to the public and you can store your items for free with eBay. You've obviously got PWCC, you've got other people saying, you know, send us your cards to, to our vault. Vault Wars in full effect, that's number nine. Number 10, Fanatics. They finally have a very, very visible presence here. Michael Rubin was at trade night. He's been walking around the show floor. They're right across from us. They have tons of live events, giveaways. Fanatics has a very, very strong and visible presence this year. They're obviously getting ready to gear up for their own events. It's been really good to see them out walking, talking to people, getting feedback. They've been doing a really great job. Number 11, this is kind of a playful one. The show floor itself has just been brutally hot. It has been sweaty. The air conditioning hasn't worked. That's one thing you've got to figure out if you're going to host the national. People are walking around. I'm seeing people, you know, begging for water, crawling across the floor like it's the desert. It is hot here, and it is nowhere as hotter on the show floor than here at our booth for some reason. You can go in any direction 100 yards, and it seems to be 15 degrees cooler. So we're here trying to persevere and get through this and staying hydrated. And the last thing that has been really, really hot is market movers and our new sales history feature. We're in sales history beta. We've got three years of golden and PWCC data. We've got about three and a half months right now of eBay data, and that's gonna build going forward infinitely. All transactions, best offer prices. So when you don't find your card in our 1.9 million card database that we add, and we add all the structured data for for the charts, you can pop over to sales history. You can see, I just put in Patrick Mahomes, flawless, number to 15, and you can scroll down, see all of these cards that have sold, get your price comps. We've been doing comp checking, working with people, helping them figure out what the value of their cards might be here at the show so that they can make strong negotiations. And it's been especially helpful for these kids. We set up the trade zone so that they can trade safely. And they've been coming up and asking for help. It's been really, really awesome. It has been a fantastic national. If you've never made it, it's well worth the trip and the investment. Try to find a buddy, save some you know, money, travel across the country, wherever you might be in the world, and hope to see you next year in Cleveland if you're able to do that. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy investing, keep on collecting, and make sure to have fun.